which has replaced the CNIB library website. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, CNIB's uh, to change, but we're in the, the middle of some pretty big changes. Um, the first was the uh, change to library service. Um, started about five years ago and, uh, and has been completed fairly recently. The action arm of CNB Library, so the accessible, what we now call accessible publishing, the Record Studio and the Braille Production Department, those still exist, and we are still producing material for the collection. But the distribution of materials is done through public libraries, and it's being done through something called which is the Center for Equitable Library Access. If you go to the CNIB library website, for example, you see the Pushfila library website. And I have a lot of information for you um, in terms of uh, registering people for Fila and, and that, how that's done. But feel free to ask me. If I can't answer it, I will pass along to one of my colleagues who has more information about that. Now, also in the process of sort of sectioning off rehabilitation services, um, we're, as we did with the library service, we're approaching provincial, federal governments to ensure that moving forward, uh, such as prevention services, orientation and mobility service, all the basic rehab services will be covered through the metal rather than in the past having to refer clients to CNB, which is charity, to get these very basic services. So this has done and uh like like library service, it'll process over the next couple of years of, of getting that organized. But what we're moving towards and the reason that my title is sort of in flux right now is that with the library no longer existing, and with our direct contact with clients being CELA, there's a very different role that I'm taking in terms of literacy for CNI registered clients. And uh, I'm going to be moving from uh, uh, library to uh, GA office. So I will be, I will still be develop, uh, developing, promoting, and running many national uh, programs and resources. Um, but I will also have the opportunity moving forward to work directly with clients in the Greater Toronto area, sort of as a model for other offices in terms of because we have the feeling here to run some exciting programs, we establish those, hopefully we'll be able to roll those out in different communities across the country. So I believe my new uh, title is going to be Program Lead Literacy. Um, this is all in development as we speak. So. I'm going to close PowerPoint for now, and I'm going to pull up the home page for Alt Lit. Now, I hope this isn't the first time that you're hearing or, or seeing about this website. Um, it is. I'm going to give you a general overview. So this is, scroll down to the very bottom. This is a CNIB website. It was developed at a time when we weren't sure what the future of CNIB Library was going to be, so we branded it completely separately. Uh, the URL is altlit.ca. So initially, you might 
might not realize it was a CNIB resource, but it is a CNIB resource. It is our C resource or Liberty website for kids and teens with vision loss and their families. Uh, some of you may remember something called the Children's Discovery Portal. Uh, this replaces that. A lot of the content has been moved over, but of course we've added additional content as well. So across the top of the page, you see there are options to enlarge the text. There is an option to change the contrast. All of the content can be different. The hand navigation goes to the home page and then special the T D Summer Reading Club for everyone, the Braille Creative Writing Contest, and games, raise the readosaurus, more stuff, and air. Now, the main home page has on it, it's labeled as such, but the very top, what we call widget, is actually a news. And what we hear are, will change depending on, on what we want to sort of announce. We've used this section before to announce the winners of the Braille Writing Contest. Um, we announced uh, the app that came out called Bali Land for teaching kids of over and just for using iPods, and we featured that in this section. And right now, we're profiling uh, a series of videos that we produce. Um, we've just sent out a lot, <laughs> a lot of copies of the Readasaurus kit, so we want people to have access to something like this so as soon as they come to the the website. So the sort of news widget is a new books section. So the two sections, the news and the new book section, are only found on the home page. The new book section just features a couple of, of uh, curves. Uh, we to profile a book in, in Braille, an e-book, and then it was originally envisioned CNIB library website. This website is all about books. So there's also the option to go directly to a page which tells families exactly what resources are available um, and, and get their hands on different types of books. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home page. Now, if you scroll down the home page, the content is the same content. Content that's shown on the left navigation spells out a bit more detail about each of these pieces that you can go through to. So the TD Summer Reading Club, it tells in a sentence or two what you got to find on that page. And it has a, a link as well in that widget. Okay. I'm going to be talking about, as I mentioned, the agenda, sort of two types of content. I'm going to be talking first about resources, and then I'll be talking about pro. And that pretty much covers the two types of content that you'll find on the web. I so, um, the first resource I'm going to talk about is books for everyone. So I'm going to look through that page. This is a good place to point parents to if they are just begin to think about alternate formats. They don't really understand the different options that are available. We try to spell out in a in a further and in a sense the, the different options that their child has to read. Um, we talk a lot about public libraries. And that kids with loss belong in public libraries, and that they should get a public library card. Um, this is, of course, even more now that, that not get access to CNIB books unless they have 
a public library card, and unless they're a public library, is a MILA. So we do encourage every a public library card. We give tips for what the things they can expect to find at a public library. Uh, the fact that public libraries have more than just books. They have programs. They have story times. They have special events. They run clubs for teens. They have social stuff and cultural stuff that they can take advantage of as well. And quickly about sort of advocacy that they are doing when they go into a public library. So is is also working with public library staff to make them aware that the new group of kids coming in potentially that need to make sure that they're offering formats that are accessible. But all the onus is, is also on the family to ask for what they need to talk to library staff uh, if if a program that, that they're is trying to attend isn't working for them to talk to them and explain what's not working. It's a bit of a learning curve for everyone. The public staff that I've dealt with are very much on board with this. They want to uh, they want to make sure that their programs are inclusive, but they're a little nervous about what that means and, and how to deliver that. So we encourage kids, teens, families, uh, teachers to work with the public library staff to make sure that uh, the programs are accessible for everyone. Um, now, every public library is different. Some public libraries have actual workstations. Some have budgets for that sort of equipment if they know that there's a demand. So part of it also is uh, even if the programs are working for family, if the family can communicate to the library staff that they're doing a good job, that you know, motivated, then the public library staff in turn can go to their uh, library boards and say, look. Look, we we have a demand for this. We should we have more talking books. We have more technology. People are coming in and asking for this and using it. That side of it as well. This page also talks about something called educated educator access, which is something that SELA offers, um, and this, I believe is thing a can do than having them uh, have the responsibility of getting before a project, for example. You can download that book, sort of, you know, sort of walk through the process of downloading the books so that they get what they need in order to complete the schoolwork. And uh, well, let's have a look at that page actually. I believe that in this case would need to, to be the one that does the library card. Uh, but in case you can, can, can click through and uh, what the requirements are in terms of the registration form. Uh, this program, I think it's been operating for um, last year. Uh, they're still doing webs to introduce it. You can see there are a that are not up over on the page. Um, so they're it's interested in making this program a success. So if you have any difficulty figuring out how to access, get in touch with SELA and they will walk you it, I'm sure. Because it's fairly new. Um, they still have the expectation that the CIB produced books that they're getting are coming from CNIB. Um, in fact, they're actually being delivered through CELA. So we're just being uh, a transition for 
them in terms of, of how we describe the uh, books that they're actually using. With Sila, you can also get access to a reason called Bookshare. And in fact, Sears uh, get up with Bookshare. And I think it's, I don't think $100, it's somewhere between $50 and $100 a year, I think. Um, and I believe they automatically renew it as long as you're a SELA member. So that's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. A video that will play that sort of talks you through what additional resources are available at Bookshare. And of course, getting directly to the books. Um, we sort of, this is obviously the only way of getting to the books. You can go directly to the CELA library catalog, but this breaks out some of the popular authors and categories, the most recent books that have been added to the CELA collection. There is also CELA for Kim Teams page on library.ca. Now, CELA just uh, with Kim any participability. So their research may not specifically be useful for uh, families of, of kids, but include those resources along with I'll just give you, along other resources. So they would have um, to find like ability online. But then they also have the Inter International Dyslexia Association, Learning Disabilities Online, all of that additional information. I'm just going back, back, back. There are on the page um, explaining this direct to bear for both iOS and Android. And then at the very bottom of this very long page about books, there are other sources. And these are sites that are not CNIB sites, but either through your public school library or directly through a website. There are uh, Story Nori has free audio stories for kids. There are additional ones that have monthly subscription fees like Audible. Just to make sure that parents, families, kids aware of all of the many different resources that are available to them. Okay. Sorry about that. That is books for everyone. The next resource I want to talk about fun and games. There are some accessible games. Uh, one was developed sort of in-house, which is Dreadnought, and this is a equivalent of Battleship. And then the three that we have, they're developed by a company called Sono Kids, and one is Sasudoku. So you're basically on rid of four by four, you're trying to different uh, sets of of sounds. So, for example, if there are animal sounds, then you're going to want to make sure that you only the cow move once in, in line across and once in the configuration of four. It works the same as Doku, but it's with all audio. And it's sort of a, a fun thing down at the bottom, which is called Remixer, and it's just different uh, different audio clips that you can arrange your own composition. And we have a memory game and all with audio sounds. So different animals that you try to do, you, you click in different spots on the page and it will reveal an animal and then you try and reveal the same animal in a different position on the page. And if you don't find it, you just keep trying until you find it. And then a link to more accessible games. Um, these are some of you may be familiar with. 
Now, I would say at this point, if if you are an expert in accessible games, I'm not. If you are, and you know of a site that I should be featuring on this page, or the pages, um, if you see a, a particularly good resource, please let me know, because as you can see, there's a lot of content here, and uh, I'm not an expert on all of in all of these areas, so it's difficult to to ensure that I've got exactly everything right. And I'm happy to accept your suggestions. Now, the last resource that I want to talk about is more stuff. Is uh, as I mentioned at the that this is where we sort of put everything that is doesn't really in anywhere else, but we want to make sure that parents are aware of it. Um, this is pages mostly for parents or teachers, not rather than for kids. So, a look to our Pinterest page, which I'll pull up in just a second. Online courses for learning Braille, um, resources, uh, Braille Canada. National Braille Press videos featured on this page, and these are just sort of testimonials who happen to be NIB clients. Again, family and educators, if I've missed some, please let me know. I'm happy to add in. Can you bring my attention it's on where to buy products and books? Interactive technologies and general online resources for education, employment, and creation. <laughs> this includes everything from um, printer files for Braille objects, I can point uh, clients to public libraries, which many many of which have maker spaces where you can use a 3D printer. And you just need to pay for your own materials. Um, printer files. Uh, existing objects are available for free in many cases. Uh, one feature Wonder Baby, Canadian Blind Sports, um, needs, CNI scholarships. Basically, just stuff. okay. Now, because this uh, this page does mention Pinterest, I'm going to pull up our Pinterest page. And a couple of other spots too. And I'm going to go directly to it. So we have two pages. We have um, for kids with vision loss is the English page. And then we also have uh, French sources. In cases, uh, material, because it's very visual, I'm not sure about the accessibility of Pinterest, but it is a very visual resource. And uh, in any cases, it can be, used, uh, you know, the, there are resources on the English page which are we relevant to a family that, so a bit of a, a bit of gray area there. Here we just feature things that we come across. I don't know how familiar you are with Pinterest. Um, follow, follow their literacy vision loss type boards, and if they pin something that we think would be interesting to our clients, we'll pin I, They do the same with us. I have a number of followers who, if I come across something on a website, I to pin it. They follow up and, and pin it subsequently to their board. Different apps, different... Uh, I came across this video, uh, the... Uh, video uh, just a couple of weeks ago. It's excellent. It has, unfortunately, no narration. It, I think it's it's not an English resource actually. It was so it just has uh, music and then it flipping pages. But it, it, if you see the book that they are demoing, it's amazing. It's no so quiet book that uh, that people did to have a tactile experience of reading. Just 
of really great ideas on Pinterest. Okay. Oops, I don't want that. No. Okay, back to Alt-Lit. Uh, I'm going to talk about programs now. I'm halfway through. Um, first I'm going to talk about is the TD Summer Reading Club. Now, if you're familiar with CNIB has offered summer reading clubs last say ten years. It changed a lot. We used to have our own summer reading club and uh we would invite kids to join, we would send them a kit and then all of the activities were either on the phone or through children's discovery portal. Um we funding from um, a number of years ago to begin to align our program with theirs and here say it was fully integrated. The year before or this this year was fully integrated. In two thousand and fifteen we still at the point where we were sending materials, kit materials, so uh sort of club materials. They give out a little notebook in the libraries, for example. Last year, we were still sending that material directly to CNIB clients and telling them, you go to your public library to use this material because that's where all the fun stuff is happening. This year, what we instead with the Hella was we put those materials, accessible versions of those club materials into the public libraries, to every the public library that was offering the TD Summer Reading Club, and then sent our clients a postcard that said, your public library. Summer Reading Club, ask an accessible notebook. You can read books in audio, e-text, or braille. If you need help with any of the activities that the libraries are running, for the library staff. So that is pared down now. That's basically our involvement with the TD Summer Reading Club. We produce the accessible versions of the club meals, which is a, a large print notebook, uh, and it, the same materials in uh, audio, braille, and CD. And it's available in every branch of the public library that runs the TD Summer Reading Club. Um, it's available for that need it. Um, in addition to promoting directly to our clients through this card that we sent them, this we actually had an article published in Abilities, uh, Abilities Magazine as well, which talked about some reading fun and the T Summer Reading Club as a very accessible program. Encourage families to visit their public library. At the same time is working with the public libraries. I'm just clicking through to the TD Summer Reading Club page. And as you can see, they have lots of information on the national website for the TD Summer Reading Club. They have links directly to the draft files. They have links to the MP3 version of the note book talk about how kids can get that that are part of the T D Summer Reading Club, CLA, Canals, SQLA. So we're with public libraries to make sure that they are equipped to offer accessible service that we're leading our, our clients to expect. That's the Summer Reading Club. Now I want to talk about the Braille Creative Writing Contest. It's a little break, and I'm going to let you listen to an audio clip. And this was my introduction to the uh, for the Creative Writing Contest presentation at the Braille Conference. Enough. 
we have to, are you wearing a headset? Because if you're wearing a headset, we might not be able to hear it at all. Because it's your, your, your earbuds. Do I need to start it over? Yeah, we can't hear it, I'm afraid, at all. Oh. <laughs> well, it'll be, a, okay, we don't need to listen to it. It's about a minute long. I urge you to I'll show you again where you'll find that the Braille Creative Writing Contest page. Go on it. It's kind of interesting because I've been doing this for a lot of years. I've been doing, I think the Creative Writing Contest has been running for over 20 years and I've been doing it uh, since the beginning. So it was interesting because I had the opportunity to sort of look over the years um, and talk about a few of the kids who Anticipated when and what they are doing now, and it was interesting because after I incantation and the kids got up and re- to read their stories and poems, we had two of the two of the winners came to us from Calgary. In fact, uh, I had a team come up to me and say, "You need to make that introduction available because parents." Who are seeing with, uh, you know, is it really that important to know Braille? She really pushed my child to succeed. Parents need to hear that. So I thought, well, I went to the recording studio and, and recorded it again. And uh, it's a thing there. I make it if you can to uh, to encourage kids and, and families to persist in their, in their Braille journey. This page, um, when the contest results are available, is very interesting because we feature uh, photographs of the winners. We have winning entries are online now, uh, aim and recorded as they usually do, uh, sections of the brilliance. And at about 17 minutes into, I think, at a 20 five minute presentation. They have a three or four minute section about the Braille class presentation with features some of the kids reading. And here we actually have uh, the opportunity to have uh, the program company from AMI come in and do interviews with the kids in our recording studio and I believe that is due to be broadcast in December. We'll update that when it's available course, looking forward to next year. Uh, we have creative writing tips and the contest rules and information about prizes and the entry form are always on this page as well. Okay, let's talk about resource. Last week, I put in the mail 1,300 Read a source kit. Exactly how many went to Alberta? Um, but L zero to six, who is CNIB, should be reading one. Um, they were registered, I think, I think for mid of September of the year. Of course, as this was our second mail out, we had. Previously, we sent out a much smaller number of kits. Obviously, those those families won't be getting a second kit. But uh, just that these are on the way to families in, in Alberta. So in the kit, uh, some of you have probably had a chance to go through this. Uh, there are changes from last year or from the the first mail out that we did, basically the same. It is a, a uh, sort of brief size care case, bright red. It has it is branded with my Redosaurus kit, um, that bright graphic of a, a Redosaurus, which is a dinosaur, and uh, meticulously placed Braille on each of the 1300 bags. We added Braille to everything that we could add Braille to. So it's on the bag, it's on the door hanger, it's on the it's on the the ruler, it's it's on everything. Um, 
two main pieces of the kit are the fan guide and the Aki book. Those pieces you load. Uh, we're not lucky enough to get a full kit or your family loves it and they want to make sure the parents are aware of, of how to do every time when a child is visiting. Download the family guide right from the website. They can download not all pages, obviously, but they can download the printages of the activity book. I'm not going to open these up, but I'm going to just I have one on the desk, and I'll flip through and give you some of the highlights. So the very first page of the family guide, we've added a note to parents because we know parents are very busy and probably overwhelmed with a lot of information. So we've told them that if or to you the kit themselves, they shall make use of it with ex family. They can send it to daycare. They can send it to preschool. They can give it to family friends who might have more time and more leave to uh, uh, some of the tips. We talk about a lot of content that's on Altlet. So we talk about different formats for reading. We talk about how reading to a child with vision loss is different. You need to describe the pictures. You need to make sure they have real life experiences to compare to what they're reading about in the books. This was developed with the help of a focus group that we had of parents and early intervention specialists and other rehab specialists across the country. We talk about teaching books. We talk about making the experience fun. We have a section about adapting and making books how to introduce people and talk about SNIB's uh, online resource, which is Alt-Lit, and we talk about public libraries. So big pieces of everything that's on the website. And, of course, we encourage people to go to the website to get more information. The Tiffany book has, as I mentioned, both print pages, which sort of work in control pages, so we have alphabet page, and then we give tips for how you might use these. This is an activity book, not in the sense that you give it to a child and walk away. It's an activity book for and your child. So and the print pages are for the parents to cut pages with the letters into squares and use them as flashcards. Um, Cut the page into strips so that your child can practice counting and begin to understand numbers. So there are alphabet pages, number pages in tactile. There are some shape pages that show the progression from shapes to more complex diagrams. And uh, is the activity book. Now at the top of the page, and you can see the picture here, there's a child using the, one of the pages. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this picture. There's a unifier. There's a ruler. There's a, a, a dinger that says my name is blank. I'm a resource that they can fill in hanging on their door. There's wiki sticks. There are some braille, some bracelets that have braille on them that say braille is fun and they glow in the dark. And um, Again, we, we point them to our um, pin for more ID about uh, books, for example. So just before I sent out the Redasaurus kit, we did a scramble. I'm going to go back to the home page. A bit of a scramble to ask the video that I mentioned, which is DIY tactile books. We actually produced three or four videos uh, afternoon. Um, I'm going to play this one for you, and the other ones I'll let you look at yourself. Um, 
to give the parents, um, a, you know, attention in the family guide. You can make book, you know, if you're crafty. But telling parents that is one thing. Showing them how simple it can be in others. So that was the reasoning behind the uh, the video, and we scrambled to get that onto so that. When the kids arrive in the homes and they go to this page, that'll be the first thing that they see. So I'm going to cross fingers that this is going to work for us. You guys have music? Karen, I'm afraid we can't hear anything because you're using a headset. It's probably not good. Gonna work. Okay. Um, what about if I turn the captions on? Yeah. 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 I, none of the captions are exactly accurate, but yeah. Rough time. Stop it there. You general idea. If you want to, that's gone, right? If you want to look after, feel free. Um, but I want to close off and, and leave some time for discussion and questions. Whoops. Okay. So, as mentioned, there are 
three or four different videos along the line. And uh, hopefully that will generate some interest in actually uh, producing some, some handmade books. I have some plans for shops possibly in the GA. Um, we did a, a work with some corporate volunteers actually um, who came and spent the day with us. We gave an introduction to literacy um, and we spent making some very basic tactile books. Uh, I think we wrote 70 of them and was put as samples into some of the resource kits. So the fans get those particular kits will actually see, oh, it really, it's just, it's sandpaper and felt. I can do this. Um, I have some ideas for how we might move that forward. Uh, maybe partnering families with volunteers that are crafty. Um, Anything really meaningful and useful books for them. Okay. The last I want to pull up is the share page. So this is a bit of a placeholder for now. Um, we're moving forward whether we're going to have message boards for parents. We're not sure what would be especially useful. I know that sort of thing already exists through different uh, family connect sort of thing. And we don't want to duplicate that. We want to make sure that we're needs of, of CNIB clients and uh, and supporting you guys in, uh, in what you need. And uh, to that end, I just thought I would open it for the last few minutes and, and ask if you had any ideas for programs, resources, or projects that we should undertake. Um, Ross, I'm not sure how this works. Do, are people going to type questions? Good question. We do encourage people, and they absolutely can, about almost our whole group that looks like have mic access. So if somebody wants to put up their hand or grab the microphone, they certainly can. They can also throw in chat window. But why don't we start with Susan because she says she has a question. Cool. Hi, Karen. The um, question is, the kids go out to the students, but how can we as, as teachers of the visually impaired get a copy kit so that we can also share it and have it as a resource for our, our own use and for use in the schools? Right. So, Fifteen hundred kits. We sent out three hundred, or sorry, thirteen hundred. I think the remaining two hundred that are still on site here are going to be used, sort of, over the course of the next year as new kits sign up uh, or register with CNIB. Um, I know that when we did the first mail out in two thousand and fourteen, we send out kit to the intervention specialists in or family and youth workers in either CNIB offices. Um, so they they would probably still have copies there. Um, it's really going to depend on, I, I know that we probably have some wrong asses, so kids coming back to us and whether we end up with a, a plus that we can distribute, I'm not sure. Um, I, I sent Kit the first time TRCBI um, out there, and I can't really promise that we're going to have a lot more available for uh, and the like. We want to sort of prioritize getting them into the hands of families, and then sort of working at it way encourage families to take them, you know, when they're, or, you know, make them available when they're having a visit from a rehab professional. Um, we've had questions from public libraries who would like to have them. It's just we're kind of stretched and, and not in the business of 
supplying them directly to families at this point anyway. Okay. That's yeah. And so here's where we'll do that little pause. We'll wait for a moment to see if anybody else wants to grab the microphone or put your hand up. How many people do we have on the webinar? Rob, do you know? 15 or 15, because once you have come in, dropped off. Okay. Susan and I, because we were writing down lots of stuff and really enjoyed the presentation. So. We only have a problem probably, uh, you know, um, in terms of PDIs in Alberta, there might be a, maybe, maybe any more than 25. So a good three quarters of our teachers of the same pair come on the webinar, which is good because it's also a holiday for some some boards. So some people are uh, have a, a fall. A fall break right now. Right, right, right. Can I just ask, um, were you aware of the outlet resource? I know it's a bit issue with the branding because it's, it's specifically branded as CNID. So a, a lot of, even with CNID, a lot of people are a little kicked about it. Anybody else wanted to respond? I'll be truthful. Um, we didn't, like, Susan and I, um, uh, and so we're quite happy uh, to hear about it because I mean, talk about it. But we did a, uh, a traveling little big clinic yesterday, and we were talking a little bit about. We certainly, certainly, we're talking about SEMA and and CNIB, but um, unfortunately, okay. now we'll switch. Uh, we'll definitely switch our terminology um, to reflect that. So uh, it looks like and I'm getting, I'm reading in the in the chat box, Calgary, not so much either. Um, so no, I think I think the answer is not universally. Okay, okay. And you really, really nice. good information, Karen, like, like really well laid out, easy for us to follow, and, and I think you're getting a lot of people going on the site now. Yeah, I, I hope so. We're going to... Uh, Method, if we can, with uh, using Google Analytics to see what, what sort of traffic gets in there. Uh, the one piece I didn't mention that we've added to the, um, the time around is the little magnet, and I probably spare ones of those that I can send to you guys. Uh, a magnet that specifically uh, promotes outlet, and it breaks into two pieces, so you can use the outside piece as a sort of a photo frame on your refrigerator, it's magnetic, and the inside piece also promotes outlet, and we're hoping that, you know, we'll keep the outside piece and give the inside piece to their babysitter or the grandparents or to spread the message, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of resources on there that are being underutilized. Yeah, it looks excellent. We'll definitely do that. We're getting just a few responses just so you know. People saying that a few people have explored the Pinterest site. Uh, you have, have explored the site a little bit, but I think that this was a good session today, and I think um, it will definitely drive a lot of people uh, to the site, uh, uh, us here at Alberta and included. Excellent, excellent. And Karen, I think with that, we don't have any further questions. Okay, well, there's my, you see my email address. Um, a few questions afterwards, please get in touch with me. Um, and uh, yeah, check out the website. And the reason somebody doesn't get that written down properly or something along those lines, I have Karen's email as well. So if you know myself or Susan or Roy, we'll make sure we get that to you. Thank you so much, Karen. Again, you shared a lot of new information for us. <coughs> I've been this for 35 years, so this was like really exciting for me to see the direction that C Night is going in because yeah. really I've participated in those creative reading contests and the, the summer reading program. But I love the fact that it's inclusive now with the library. So our, yeah. our students with vision loss are now just like everybody else. They're in with the, the kids in the neighborhood and using the same resources, but only in an accessible format. So exactly. really exciting. Good for you guys. Good, good. Thank you so much.
for the opportunity. Perfect. Well, thank you, Karen, and thanks okay. to everybody who came. We really appreciate it. As always, if anybody has any questions about this or any upcoming sessions or anything along those lines, don't be afraid to drop us a line. Okay, thanks, everybody. I'll give everybody a minute or so, and then I'll be shutting the system down. Thank you so much.